Hi everybody, I'm Brian Ozone. Thanks for tuning in to the Brian Ozone YouTube channel. It is Tuesday, November 24th, 2020. Um, the Mandalorian is diving headfirst into one of Star Wars' most controversial subjects ever. In Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace is set in 32 BBY. BBY stands for Before the Battle of Yavin, or ABY is After the Battle of Yavin. It's sort of like our year zero. And then you have BC and, and AD. So that's kind of what that's about. So let's get into it. Uh, it says, placing the events approximately 41 years prior to those in the current Disney Plus hit series, The Mandalorian. Now that Disney Plus show is about to dive headfirst into one of Star Wars' biggest controversies started by Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon Jinn four decades earlier in the Star Wars timeline. If you've seen <clears throat> The Phantom Menace, you may recall Qui-Gon Jinn taking a blood sample from Anakin Skywalker and saying he's checking his blood for infections, but meanwhile he was checking his blood for midi-chlorines. which ultimately tests out off the chart 20,000 midichlorines, Obi-Wan, Jin's Panawan famously said, even Master Yoda doesn't have a midichlorian count that high. A scene later in episode one has Qui-Gon explaining what midichlorians are. He explains it as a microscopic life form that resides in all living cells that provide a connection between living things and the Force, according to Qui-Gon. Um, he also went on to explain how we're symbiotes for it and that we live together for the cause of the force so that's what he that's what they're doing in in episode 1 when episode 1 released many Many people went against the concept of midichlorians, arguing that it put an almost Dragon Ball Z-esque quantifications on the idea of a Jedi and the Force. Along with establishing a literal blood right to who gets to be a Force user and who don't. It was explained Miles away from Obi-Wan's description in A New Hope. He just, Obi-Wan described it as an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, penetrates us, and it binds the galaxy together. The original films made it seem like anyone can become a Jedi even a farm boy from Tatooine. Last week on The Mandalorian, they went to destroy an Imperial base on the other side of Navarro, but they found so much more. Grief Karga, Cara Dune, 
and the Mandalorian stumble across a lab which is directly under Moth Gideon's control. They find a transmission from Dr. Pershing from season one that he was with the uh, the Empire's warlord uh, seeking out the baby Yoda. So he has a transmission and he's explaining stuff and it's only two days old they find out because they thought it was much older but it's only two days old so this is all making sense to them that this is a full-on operation still that there's not a skeleton crew like they thought that was inside this imperial base there's actually something going on here um The M count, or midichlorian count, Pershing is talking about, is revealed to be baby Yoda's. We'll have to see how the midichlorian's count plays out in the future episodes of The Mandalorian. Now, I have to say, I don't see it as, well, I never really watched Dragon Ball Z, but... I don't see it being, especially I don't see George stealing ideas from other shows or anything like that. So this is all Star Wars content. And um, if you'd like to comment about it, please, please do. Um, you can uh, please like comment and subscribe to the brian ozone youtube channel and brian ozone is one word um if you have friends who uh, love star wars uh please let them know about my um youtube channel and hopefully they'll like it and subscribe it as well i also have a facebook group it's called star wars everything and anything and it's a buy sell trade discussion group which you can buy sell trade discuss everything and anything star wars so again i'd like to thank you for watching and i would ask you to please um, let others know about the channel and hopefully they will subscribe to it as well and um, until next time, guys, may the force be with you.